any organization within uh, safety, you know, or, with, or any organization in Australia, but well, basically in the world, um, puts in these controls in place to keep people safe. You know, we have hazards, risk, and they need to be controlled. Uh, so these become a big, important thing. Yeah, then we want to, of course, make sure that they're working, you know, that something is happening. So we get these complex auditing systems to see if they're doing what they're supposed to do, whether they're implemented, maintained, they used correctly. Now, these audits, in turn, provide the, the facts or the, the information, the records that organizations then make decisions on. You know, these can be behavioral observations, training records, workplace inspections, maintenance sheets. And yeah, after we have them, then organizations go like, oh, we didn't pass this, so we need to do more of this. Or, hey, our training is good. We, we don't need to worry about our people because we've got this fact. Now, everybody knows that this is not really true. You know, these audits get fudged, or at least they don't capture what work is really like or what the organization is actually like at the very least you know when an audit is coming people will try to fix things make sure things look good for the audit because it's important to to pass this audit now this could be a good thing in the sense that you know we raise the standard a little bit but it also means that the organization or the audit is not providing an honest picture anymore because the audit is showing it's good all the time but actually it's only good when the audit is there and look, in the worst case, the audit just gets fudged and the bar never gets raised. But either way, you know, the audit hides its own influence on the results it creates. Now, of course, in any organization, there's still people talking. There's not only audits and someone might have a hunch, you know, I might have a hunch that the audits are not completely giving an honest picture. But then it's my hunch versus, you know, this $10,000 inspection program. So yeah, are you going to give my hunch the same value as this inspection program? Probably not. If I'm persuasive, I might get a couple of people on board and they go like, oh, you, you might have a point. But then what happens? We install or expand the audit system. You know, So we get more audits and more audits. And in the end, these audits still have the same weakness, weaknesses that, that all audits have which is that they hide their influence on the results they produce. Now, but, you know, let's say I got some people to act on my hunch and we, um, we installed more audits. Even then, the other problem we run into is that all audits only tend to capture process measures, not outcome measures. You know, we see whether the control is working as intended, but we don't see whether the control was the right idea to begin with. Um, so it's like testing, you know, the relationship with my partner by checking the number of presents I buy in a year for her or whether I've done research in buying the right presents. It's not actually telling me whether the presents I'm buying are actually good or whether I should be focusing on buying presents for my partner in the first place. Not surprisingly, um, I don't actually do audits around the state of my relationship. I expect this is true for most of you. I like to think that I can tell whether my relationship is doing good because I know my partner, I see my partner. And while, you know, in no way this is perfect and you never run into to problems, um, I'm certainly right that there is some feedback that I get along the way, you know, which is not the same as an officially audited trail with predetermined questions. You know, I can get feedback from, from things that I didn't know or didn't even consider in advance. Well, holding that idea, I want to want you to consider an alternative way of trying to think about assessing your control's effectiveness. You know, what would be the equivalent of this? And I would say that would be going to the experts around the task or the control and see what feedback they get, what they what they find about the control. Now, of course, when I say going to the experts, some people might get a bit uneasy. You know, aren't self experts' opinions just subjective? How do we know we can trust experts? Um, don't experts still make mistakes? And if we dive into the research, we find very different views on expertise in the research. If we go to the 
heuristics and biases par paradigm, which is associated with Daniel Kahneman, and he wrote a best-selling book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. You find a generally quite negative view on experts, you know, using many clever experiments um, in this research paradigm, you sh it was found that people make predictable mistakes, novices and experts alike, and experts often not doing better than chance. You see that university students do worse than uh, less educated people. You see political scientists and stock traders who lose out to dark throwing monkeys. These things yeah, make you well mistrust uh, experts and uh, what makes it even worse is that these experts were often not aware of their own uh, failures. Uh, another research paradigm, the naturalistic decision-making paradigm uh, associated with Gary Klein, David Woods and uh, some others, they described experts as almost these superhuman-like uh, people who could do amazing things, um, you know, firefighters who just instantaneously know that something is wrong with the building and get out uh, before it collapses, you know, seconds before it collapses. Um, nurses who recognize which babies will get sick before they show any symptoms uh, or any of the official symptoms. Uh, chess champions who, you know, have working memory uh, or can go beyond the limits of, of working memory in terms of remembering what boards look like. And on top of that, these people seem to be you know, very aware of their own limitations. They recognize, like, no, this is this is where I'm not certain anymore. Um, so, yeah, if you would go to these studies, you'd be like, man, experts are the solution for everything. So, so what does that leave you with as an organization? You know, you have basically two opposing ideas, and yeah, not a clear way to make sense of it. Luckily for us, the two leading researchers of these fields, Daniel Kahneman and Gary Klein, got together and hashed out their differences and to look where they would agree or as they called it, fail to disagree with each other. And the biggest difference they recognized was the type of expertise or the type of experts they were talking about, you know, political scientists on one end versus firefighters on the other end. Domains of these experts differed in important ways. The firefighters from naturalistic decision-making, you know, they were on the high pressure, lots of uncertainty. But generally within their domains, there was a some, uh, somewhat of a stable relationship between cues in the environment. You know, firefighters can learn it to recognize certain types of fire, certain types of houses. Uh, they can become familiar with their equipment, you know, little things to fiddle with. In addition, you know, the domain has clear enough and timely feedback. If uh, when fighting fire, you know, and a strategy is not working, the firefighter will find out immediately and learn from it, and at least you'll be able to do things differently the next time. You know, and this same stable environment with clear cues doesn't exist in the same way when trading stocks or when you're a political scientist. You know, the players in the game change constantly, uh, and they might respond differently to similar things that happened in the past. So relationships that you thought existed don't exist anymore tomorrow, and uh, the feedback is not always clear. If a uh, political analyst makes a prediction, it might take years before that uh, actually plays out, making it a lot more difficult to learn. And on top of that, others read this prediction, so they might just adjust their behavior on, on it, based on it. So even if the prediction was right, it turns out to be false because people change their behavior, making it even more difficult for them to learn, you know, for those political analysts to learn whether they had a good analysis or not. Now, to translate this back to our case of looking at controls, we need to think about, do we have experts that fit in the first category of a stable environment with clear cues, or do we have experts in this fuzzy, too complex domain without feedback? So that's the question you want to get to when you start asking people, uh, is this control working or not? Now, I think in most domains, we probably find plenty of experts that fit into the first category, but it is something we, uh, but thinking about who those experts are is an important question to ask for yourself.